Okay folks, Brian here from Northwind Garage. Yesterday I had to rescue a damsel in distress, which was my wife. Uh, the Econoline E350 2006. 5.4 liter, it quit. It quit going up the road, so uh, it would run. She tried to start the key and it would run for a second and then shut right down. So I'm, I'm thinking it's a fuel related issue. The battery was junk, so I went and uh, went to the closest parts store I could and grabbed a battery for $117 or so, and uh, threw that in, and that had no effect. So it wasn't a, a battery-related issue, but we knew the battery was on its way out. So uh, we went and grabbed one, quick, easy, because it was right there, and we went and did it. So that didn't work. So here you see the chain hooked up. I had to tow her up the hill and back to the house and uh, get her back to a safe place and save ourselves about $350 for a towing charge. And my first thoughts go to fuel pump issue. So uh, you need a special tool to get the fuel filter out in these. This particular one's a Lyle. It does AC fittings. That's the number on it. It does AC fittings and fuel line fittings. It's a disconnect tool. Uh, there's little fingers inside, inside the connectors. The fitting goes over the top. Of, this is the fuel filter for it. The connectors go over and they have little fingers that go over this little ridge right here. And they, they, they prevent the connection from coming apart with pressure on it so and there's o-rings that seal on this part of it so you need the special tool to go over the end of the fuel filter like this and go in and depress those little fingers inside the connection to be able to release it okay now they make some of these that are metal I don't have the metal one I, I grabbed the plastic one uh, number one because it was cheaper uh, Number two, because it did AC lines too. And uh, we have ACs in all our vehicles. So that's, that's the road we're running down. So we're about to get under the vehicle now. And the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the old fuel line and see if I can touch the key off and get the electric fuel pump to pump fuel out of the line. That would tell me that the fuel filters uh, the obstruction and it'll also tell me if the fuel pump works so uh, I believe it's a fuel related issue I didn't check it I, I just opened the fuse box didn't check any fuses didn't do anything like that I know it needs a fuel filter because the 10 years we've had the vehicle we never put a fuel filter in it my bad so uh, I'm gonna try the easy thing first and go from there so let's get after it All right, so the fuel filler. You going under? Where are we going? Sorry. So the fuel filter is right here, or filler is right here. That tells me the fuel tank's on this side. So first thing I'm going to do is go under here. And I, I've been under here, so I know where it is. And uh, cameraman's going to go around on the other side and see if we can get some pictures of this. Here's that f fuel filter. Now, it does matter what direction you put this in, okay? So, this is the new one. In the flow, the engine is up front, so the arrow on this is pointing towards the engine. So, basically it's gonna go just like that in the place of that one that's in there. But this vehicle quit. So, what we wanna do is make sure that fuel pump is working. So, to remove this fuel filter, you have these stainless steel clips on here that prevent it from coming apart, like I was saying earlier. They go from here to the bottom of the connection to prevent the pressure from blowing the, the uh, connection apart. So, 
this fuel filter also has a clamp or just a clip that it just rolls right up out of and you take the stainless steel clip off like so you got to kind of jockey it one way and then push it forward to get these little ears these little dog ears out of the center of the connection it's like a safety device to keep them held together and then this little tool set has the sizes down here and this is a 5 16 size and you just want to put this over the the end of it the filter and push that in into that connection and it collapses those ears I don't know if you can see. Can you still see? Yep. Okay, so it collapses those ears so that connection will come apart. Maybe. Uh, all right. It did go in there, didn't it? Now they make a metal one out of these too. I don't know. This is if these are the ones I needed. Or these are the go-to ones or not. See, probably not with my hand in the way, huh? Yeah. <sighs> okay, look at that. Success. So, that's raw fuel dripping on me here, so I want to be aware of that, too. And push that light back a little bit so we don't... <sighs> All right. So now, so I'm going to try to bump the key over and see this line right here, Luke? The blue one? Yeah, I need you to get back a little bit because it's going. if it does work, it's going to squirt fuel out of it. Okay. Okay. So get back a little bit. You don't want to do this in your garage, folks. Come on. I'm just going to bump that fuel pump. See, okay. if, see if we get any pressure out of it for a second. Yeah. Can you see good there? Yeah, it's good on the camera. Yeah. This is not recommended for a garage. You do not do this inside the garage. And you keep all flames away. You know the drill. <laughs> So I'm just going to bump the key over and see if we got that fuel pump is pumping. So yell at me as soon as you see fuel coming out of that thing. Got fuel? Yeah, a lot of it. Okay, perfect. Alright. Okay folks, like I said, do not do this indoors, do not do this around any flames. Uh, you should use a pan underneath it. I'm kind of rednecking the whole thing here, but I got to get this thing running. This is my, my wife's main source of transportation with the children, so. Alright, so now we got to do the thing up front here with the, the connection up front. So. See how that goes. Of course you can't see it because they don't give me any room. 
here. Here I go. I'm going to use my little the yellow one. Little special tool here on the front one. And the front one is the same as is the one in the rear it has that clip, that safety clip. Okay, and now we're gonna depress that into that connection to pull them ears down on the fuel filter. I notice I took my sunglasses off because you cannot see under here with sunglasses on. I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver, I think, to help with that. All right, now there's All right. Success. A lot of times the salt and of course we live in a salt state. They use salt on our roads. But Let's check this out. Oh, look at the garbage coming out of that. Well, it need to be replaced. Looks like it might have been original or some motocraft part. Keep my beard out of the gasoline. So, on these guys, I like to take a little uh, silicone grease as a lubricant or whatever. Just to, it lubricates the O-rings when you put this in. All you need is a little dab on there, nothing spectacular. Just to wet it so it doesn't, you're not pushing into that dry connection there. Which it's not dry because it had fuel running all over it, but. That's just typically the way I put things together to help them go together a little better. Now, once again, this is tricky, so I'm going to get this. All right. Can't get my hands in there to work. did hear it click. So I heard an audible click when I put this together. This front one you can't see too well and usually that's the one that gives you trouble, the one you can't get to. So, get this Front one's attached, so I hopefully can you see this one? Yeah. Can you actually see what I'm doing? Yeah. All right. So the front one goes together the same way as the back one. You just give it a good push on there, and I heard a audible click. There's there's fingers inside that connection that grab. 
on the ridge of this filter right there on that ridge they prevent it from coming back out like okay then then this this clip goes in here go there's a uh, little dog ears that go inside the connection and then clip over like that to prevent it from coming apart when we put pressure to it so and then you have the fuel filter holder here can you see that yep okay so like I said the arrow right there points towards the engine and the front ridge of this goes towards the engine so just pop that back in the clip and then we'll pick up our mess here and see if it'll turn over now what we're going to want to do is uh, to bleed the fuel system and uh, normally what I do is I just click it a few times I heard the pump I could actually hear the pump I don't know if you can or not just a little buzz there so you do this there it's kind of groaning down there yeah okay so after you do this a few times the period of time the pump stays on will go shorter and shorter because it's coming up to pressure Okay, so now I'm going to try to start it. Left my poor wife aside the road. Kind of my own fault. Should have changed that thing out last time I did an oil change. I didn't know the age of it when we got the car. The car was used when we got it, or van rather. Would have saved myself a whole lot of trouble if I had just changed it out. Then I would have known how old it was. Okay, folks, so let's do a quick rundown on this. Okay, just to show you what's going on with this fuel filter. Look at, look at this. Look at what's coming out of that. Nice, huh? That's what caused that. Of course, it's partly my fault because I didn't change it. I should have changed it years ago, but I didn't. So, uh, preventive maintenance. That's, that's basically what this is all about. Anyway, you, you see what a, a dirty fuel filter can cause. Let's do a rundown on the cost. The actual fuel filter was ten dollars and fifty cents, forty-nine cents, fifty cents, close enough. Uh, the tool set, the disconnect tool set, which is the this Lyle tool set, which it's almost impossible to do that without this tool set. Now I he have heard telltale on when you get a little bit of dirt or rust inside uh, those connections. These plastic ones, are they don't do a good job. You need a metal one. And they do sell metal ones. Uh, some are like pot metal or cast, die cast, aluminum or whatever they are. But stay away from the die cast ones because they're just as bad as the plastic ones. Now in this situation, uh, this vehicle originally came from Florida. So uh, it's in pretty good shape as far as uh, body and rust and that sort of thing. It hasn't been up here in the north long enough so to have an effect on all those fittings and whatnot but anyway this is this is the tool set once again CarQuest fuel filter and the battery was $117 which I knew she needed one anyway because it was causing trouble uh, plus the battery connections are dirty I'm gonna have to clean those up and uh, That'll have to be another video. But anyway, uh, that's it on that. So, 
I had to tow her home. So save yourself some trouble, folks. Do those field filters, do those oil filters. Uh, preventative maintenance. Yeah, you, I can't say enough about it. You know, if I had to have somebody tow this, I, I can see anywhere from, depending on who I called, of course, those prices are all over the place too, depending on who I had called to get this thing back home. I mean, this isn't a, 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 a Geo or a Subaru or anything like that. This, this is a one ton vehicle, so they might have charged me more for towing it. It's, it's a fairly good sized vehicle and it's heavy. It's heavy, so they, they probably would have charged accordingly or who knows. You don't you never know what you're gonna get with uh, the prices on that either. Sometimes you can get um, a guy uh, just doing weekends and emergencies or uh, doing it part time or whatever, you can do it for 50 bucks. So if you find the right guy. So I just hooked a chain on it and dragged her home. So that's that. Uh, so that's going to be the end of this video, folks. Uh, peace out. God bless you. Like, subscribe, push the bell. We'll catch you on the next one.